So there they were, looking up 60 feet of sheer cliffside. A quick survival check told them that indeed, the fanatics had gone this way. So they strapped in. Killian, the halfling rogue. Apoth, the human sorcerer. Raz, the shifter bard. Frog, the frog. At this point, he was still a humanoid frog. And Bronstag, the dwarven forge cleric. They began to climb. Frog was able to crest the quickest with his natural climb speed. As Frog stood at the top and surveyed the countryside, he heard a low rumbling coming from a cave behind him. Frog drew his long sword and called, something doth rear its ugly head. Prepare to stand with me, friends, and we shall slay it. Some of his companions were closer than others. Killian, Apoth, Raz were probably within 30 feet of him. Their climber's gear clinking and clanging in perfect symmetry. Bronstag, he had struggled to get up about 10 feet. Back up top, from a break in a large rock formation stepped a towering creature, a hill giant, a bulbous, filthy, 50 foot tall thing with flabs and muscle gyrating with every thundering step that it took toward Frog, dragging behind it a massive club. Frog attacked, securing some early hits. Killian arrived, and his daggers too gained purchase on the creature. Angered, the giant gave out a mighty roar. It swung its massive club at Killian and grasped for Frog with the other hand. Killian was able to nimbly avoid the creature's club, but Frog, was not so fortunate. He was caught in the hands of this soiled, stinking, repugnant creature. Cresting the cliffside, Raz the Bard assessed the situation. No. And promptly, might I add, wisely no. hid himself. Apoth, thinking in a similar sense, latched his climber's gear in place. I'm afraid not and decided it was much safer for him to dangle from the cliffside. Bronze, he lost his foot and slid further down the cliffside. Things turned dark for the adventurers when the hill giant tucked his arm and threw Frog, who soared 200 feet, vertical overtaking his mind, and landed at the base of the cliffside with a dull thud, completely unconscious. Seeing this, Bronstag let go of the cliffside and rushed to the aid of his friend. Once he knew that Frog was breathing, he moved further away from the cliffside to try to get an actual view on the creature. As Bronstag got a better angle, spells from Raz and Apoth took their mark against the giant with some effect, feeling the situation become dire. Killian took aim with another strike. His daggers rang true. The giant dropped its giant club, furious. It reached out with Killian with both hands, and this time was able to capture it. With a giddy grunt, the giant threw Killian off the cliffside, who soared before landing feet away from his friend Frog, and he was now also unconscious. Bronstag, cursing, had finally reached the top of a smaller ridge further out, where he could get an angle to see the hill giant. Having been raised by decent and proper dwarves, Bronstag knew he was looking at the embodiment of everything he had been taught to do. Bronstag turned his mind to Branmir, the god of the forge, and summoned a mighty spiritual weapon in the shape of a golden mace. It formed and flew through the air until it struck the hill giant. Its connection rang out like a hammer meeting an anvil. The giant cast its beady eyes down the cliffside and grinned as it saw a dwarf. The creature picked up a large boulder and hurled it at Bronstag, narrowly missing. The mighty spiritual weapon struck again. The creature responded with another boulder, this time coming so close to Bronstag that pure instinct took over. He dropped himself to the ground and the boulder rolled over the top of him. However, he lost concentration and his magical mace dissipated 
with the sound of heated metal being doused. Raz stood from behind his hiding place and hit the monster with a shattering spell that thundered with a loud crackling. <clears throat> a flurry of magic missiles then came from the side of the cliff as Apoth let loose his arcane vigor. The hill giant stumbled, summoning his remaining strength. Bronstag stood and recast his spiritual weapon, this time in the shape of a golden warhammer. It swore and struck the giant and turned his head all the way around. The great beast fell dead. And that, my friends, is why this cliffside will forever be known as Giant's Fall. Hey everybody, my name is Saroon. I'm a storyteller and I travel around and try to tell as many stories as I can. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more of these. Also, go ahead and leave a comment on your favorite encounter or experience at your table and I might find a way to work it into my repertoire. We have to give a big shout out to the best bard in the business, Sirenscape, who provided the music and awesome sound effects for this tavern story. Be sure to check them out at www.sirenscape.com. Catch you next time.